but, but look, when, look what happens when you have a political position on an issue that obviously conflicts with the best interests of the nation as a whole or particular uh, very important aspects like like global warming, right? That that's that's a very classic example. It's in everyone's best interest to get to the the heart of the matter and start addressing the problem. But because it's become a politicized debate, there are certain positions that politicians have to adopt publicly. Now, I think behind the scenes, they have a very different perspective. It might be that they are perfectly aware of what they're doing, but they're in conflict with their funding sources. You know, if you're primarily funded by uh, automobile manufacturers, and the best thing for the nation is to, to improve the fuel, average fuel economy of every fleet, then obviously you have a conflict of interest, and, and your, your conflict will lead you one way or the other. But I don't honestly think their public position, whether their UKIP is pro-homeopathy, anti-global warming, will necessarily dictate what policy they adopt. It's much more to do with who's providing the votes and the money. And in the U.S., the money is the votes or are the votes. I think it's worse than that because with global warming, global warming is a reality that, that, that it requires hard, dedicated answers. This is not easy. This is, this is looming and it's it's it means a lifestyle change. It means a change in technology is required, and we don't have it ready. And it means that there are some very very serious repercussions, and people don't want to deal with that. In typical, the people that, that we're talking about is that with religious thought in general are trying to avoid reality in the first place. So when you give them a really scary one, one that will require that they take responsibility for something that they do, and one that will require for them to come up with answers, and we know that typically they don't take responsibility, they don't come up with answers. They want to avoid the whole problem and pretend that if they can ignore it, that they will go away. This is what you get with global warming. That's why they want it to be a hoax. Uh, in my geology class, uh, they, my, the, the teacher, for whatever reason, chose to show um, uh, an inconvenient truth in that classroom. And the surprising reaction was this redneck kid sitting next to me who said that he drives a 1969 Chevy Chevelle with a 454 with the with a high-rise manifold and all like this. And he says he's going to continue riding this. It didn't. It didn't matter to him what the hell they're we're, they're talking about. He's going to continue using this gas guzzling car. He doesn't have to take any responsibility. He doesn't have to make any any changes. He can ignore the problem. Now, of course, he didn't phrase it that way, but that's ultimately what he's saying. He doesn't want to take responsibility. He doesn't want to deal with it. He doesn't want to accept it because it means something from him that he has to do, and he's not prepared to do that. Okay, um, Daniel, I'm going to thank you very much uh, for your call. We've reached there. I see someone. Uh, I'm going to remove you, but thank you very much. Um, I see someone in the chat is uh, saying that they desperately want to call in. Um, be quick. Send a Skype contact request through to Magic Sandwich Show. You can do that by clicking on the banner above. Um, and if you do it very quickly, we will get you on. Um, otherwise, we'll be ending the show shortly. Uh, whilst, if it's, you're actually going to do that whilst it's uh, whilst you are. Can I thank very much Cream, who I know is uh, in the room at the moment. He was the person that did the banner uh, for us. And if you go to the banner, you will see links to our Facebook page, our YouTube page, and our website. Um, you'll also see that there is a Just Giving Donate button, which will take you to the donation page for the Magic Summit Show, sorry, MSF, the Doctors Without Borders event, which will be taking place over the uh, 8th and 9th of uh, September of this year um, and the contact request doesn't seem to be coming in but we'll give you a couple of moments uh, again uh, a huge thank you to Tony who works away behind the scenes ensuring that this is brought to you in its highest quality and recorded and um, when it is recorded we subsequently post it onto YouTube uh, and now we've got a con contact request so let's see where we get to with this um, oh, goodness no gist of topic or whatever, but hey, we'll take a chance on it. Um, yes, it, uh, the show will be um, posted on our YouTube channel, and it will also um, be posted onto iTunes. Muffin, are you with us? Uh, yeah, can you guys hear me? We can indeed. Welcome to the show. Oh, man, I'm so happy actually to be on. I'm so, I'll be quick. I'll be so quick. I'm sorry. No, it's no problem. Take your time. I got one question. Uh, in the 
I got a couple, uh, like two. In your point of view, is the end of time doctrine in the Abrahamic religion an essential belief to the doctrine, and is it a problem for our society and like for the churches to be? You think that's a problem to anybody? Well, before no, before, I don't. Before, hang on, hang on. Why would it be a problem for them? I don't understand. Just the belief that you know Jews run the world and like Muslims thinking that they're chosen, and here in the states we're suffering from a problem with the Black Hebrew Israelites believing that they're chosen group. And I was just uh, you know I, I see this a lot with conspiracy theorists or anybody thinking that the world is uh, is aiming towards an ending. And I was just you know seeing your point, guys, point of view. Okay. Uh -huh. All right, well, while it may be, and when you're talking about the global warming situation, if you want to avoid that, the only way to do that with your theology is to take away your responsibility for the future by not having a future. So when you say that these are the end times, then it literally does not matter what you do because there can't be any repercussions. It doesn't matter how much you destroy the planet. There's not going to be any other generations after you that will have to live with the damage that you've done. But as far as the theology goes... No, there is no dependence on that because, I mean, people really, people just make up whatever they want. I mean, how many how times have you heard that uh, we're all going to be on a different planet with God or that, uh, that there's this lake of fire thing and then we all have these spiritual beings and, and then somebody else throws in, oh, yeah, somebody mentioned something about Satan was going to rule for a thousand years, so we're going we're gonna to have hell on earth for a thousand years or maybe it's just going to be a collect a, corrupted political position like it already is, so it'll be like a bad American TV drama, and that'll be the world that we live in for the for the next thousand years, and then everything becomes peaceful. So in that that one element of theology, they have a future, and in the others, there's this abrupt end, and everything stops being material and moves into a spiritual plane. It doesn't seem to depend on any one of these tales or interpretations of them. I, I interpreted Muffin's question somewhat differently. and um, I, I, For me, there seems to be a rejoicing amongst the theists yeah. that we are living in the end times. Why is it that they're so desperate to be living in the end times? That's what I don't understand about it. Well, they're absolutely gleeful about it. The ones that adhere to that, the ones that are they're going to escape their responsibility by, you know... You, by not having to worry about anything that they do to the future. They don't have to worry about, you know, saving the environment or anything of that sake. But you're, you're right that they, they seem to hate the world that they live in and that life is this miserable ordeal that you have to go through before the end finally comes and saves you from this horrid existence where you have to put up with breathing all the time. And, yeah, and then once there's this great calamity, it's, it's a joyful situation when they hear that there was some incredible earthquake and, and, and it looks like the end is coming. They get all excited and happy about it, and it's a very disturbing feeling. Is that a problem? Do you remember, sorry, sorry, do you remember Ken, Ken, Ken Hoven would, would always include in his little spiel that, uh, you know, that was uh, 6,000 years ago, and here we are today waiting for Jesus to return in, oh, about five minutes. Do you think he really took that seriously? I mean, do you, do you really think that he, he was worried his, his talk would be interrupted uh, by the rapture? Uh, th there are these people that, that live well, their well, lives Gordon, thinking that... Let's not forget, um, what's his date, Har Harold Camping and the amount of followers that he had. Right. And uh, two yeah. predictions last year. We've got another one, I think, in... Is it the 23rd or 24th of December of this year? I can't remember. May and Calendar, well, no. is that the one? But yeah. I... I Anyone that has any doubt about this, I uh, invite you to put into a Google search engine doomsday predictions, and I can't remember the specific uh, title of the web page, but you will find a list of predictions of the end of the world. And I think that within this millennium, in the last 10 years, there have probably been a couple of hundred, and over the previous hundreds of years, there's been thousands um, and I have to add this, too. When I was a little bitty kid, um, about, around about two or three, uh, our neighbors in Alaska uh, lived in a house where they did no repairs. If they had a hole in the wall, the hole in the wall stayed. If the plumbing backed up, it stayed. They did not mow the lawn. Why? Because Jesus is coming back any minute. Mind you, they had eight kids, and they would continue bringing more souls unto the Lord. But they wouldn't. You know, I would think wouldn't. that they wouldn't want to be in the process of making kids when Jesus returns. Wouldn't that be awkward if he like walked in on them? <laughs> Jesus again, is a peeping tom. 
look at the look at the perspective of not wanting to be responsible for anything that you do, right? Well, hang on, I've just had this incredible thought. Concordance is absolutely right. Jesus is the peeping time, and because God can see everything we do, He's a great voyeurist, isn't He? I, I don't get to complete my thought. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, Aaron. Hey, Aaron I'm sorry. It's the first time I've this, interrupted uh, you all evening. <laughs> the whole preppers phenomenon, this is not specifically religious, but people who believe that the end of the world is coming or a great calamity. And they're the, the, Deep Air, you're probably not as cognizant of this, but in the U.S. there are a fairly small group of people who stock their their safe room with enough food and water and ammunition to survive the coming apocalypse, whether it be, you know, a robot or a zombie or you know the rapture or whatever it may be. They they are literally preparing for months of warfare and starvation and general end of the world. I'm not quite sure of the psychology, but I have a friend who is a just in case prepper. Um, he's also a deeply religious guy, and I, I think you know he doesn't want to say it to me, but that he honestly believes that at some point, you know, there's going to be a religious war what or happens, something similar. What happens well, he, when he, he comes out middle. when his food runs out and he comes out of his den? Okay, what well, does he I expect gotta, to see? Let me. He plans on starting question. over. I think. Uh, I'm sorry, Aaron. Go, go, Aaron. My next door neighbor about 15 years ago was one of these people. They had a Jeep CJ5, one of the uh, Jeep CJ7. I'm sorry, and he had it fitted with with uh, with the crash guards made out of solid steel on the front, and it had to be of the type that was before a certain age when they started when the, the government started putting tracking systems in the cars so that they can shut off your vehicle from satellites. So they've got a standard transmission car that previous to this era so that the government can't shut you off and you can run on regular gas as if that was an issue. And they're all, they have these machine guns. The whole house is full of machine guns. Of course, he's got way too many damn kids. And he has all these bullets that are sealed in vacuum sealed aluminum casing. So they've always got good fresh rounds of ammunition and they've got all this stuff that they were, they were going to go to this underground facility that was being built in Missouri, supposedly, around the time that the comet hale Bop was coming, and that this was when the world was supposed to end at that time. Now, not surprisingly, this guy ended up losing his job, losing all of his money, losing his apartment, and ultimately not having the funds required to get his family to Missouri to hide from the comet, which never actually caused any damage. And here's another problem that we have with these people. They invested their lives and all of their money into this ridiculous plan to go to an underground cave system that I doubt even existed over Jesus coming back on a comet is what they thought was going to happen. Um, again, as, as ever, um, inundated with contact requests towards the end of the show. Um, Muffin, I think you may have had another point. Can we move on to that? Because I want to try and fit uh, one more caller in at least. Yeah, I, I was just thinking that it was more of an esoteric teaching within a lot of Christian churches that the world will be ending soon. Because I, was, Anyways, back to, to the next point. You guys ever heard of Michael Tesherian? He's you know, No. He's this big Illuminati. Tell, tell us who he is. He's this Illuminati. Uh, he's a he uh, he does a lot of uh, sh talks. He his website's unslave. dot com. Talks a lot about Illuminati and uh, Freemasons, female Illuminati, and all this stuff. And he talks about how academics are, are wrong and science and all this crap. But I was just wondering if you guys knew who he was. But it's okay if you guys don't. Well, we 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 got enough of this. He says academics are wrong. So what he's saying in summary is the people who know what they're talking about don't know as much as I do. Is kind of his position. He think, yeah, he, his knowledge is like Helena Blavatsky, like theosophy, and he thinks that the truth lies within those kind of like old tales of... Yeah, um, we, we had, a, we had a, a member of the, or the chairman of the Board of Education here a couple of years back said that, uh, you know, somebody has to stand up to experts, and of course he was talking about somebody that doesn't yeah, know what he's talking should know about. The, the truth will not be denied. <laughs> Social, how can we help you? Yeah, well, um, I'm living in Kentucky, and here in Kentucky we have, uh, still hear me okay, here in Kentucky we have some yeah. issues with creation and intelligent design, if you want to call it that. But um, I guess 
I found out this, uh, apparently in our law, we have a statute up that was put into effect in the early 90s. I didn't, I found out this from going to the NSC website, looking up all the research on what they had, at least uh, on my own state. And uh, I hope the cable works, I'm just going to share a picture of this. It, uh, it's pretty lame. Uh, it's pretty, you can tell this is a, I don't know, for anybody that uh, keeps up with this stuff, you can tell that it's uh, very dated <laughs> as far as the uh, the wording goes. It's it's, it's called. It's I'm titled, totally sorry, I'm, so sure. I'm, I'm I'm finding it somewhat. To hear you? Can you can you cut to the chase? Uh, and then I'm going to remove you once you've asked your question. Sure. Uh, more or less, I was going to just uh, I wanted people to see this old legislation. Check out Kentucky's legislation. 158177, the teaching of evolution, the right to include the Bible theory of creation. It is so old and outdated, but it's still in effect. And I, and I even think that uh, I have relatives, uh, obviously we all do, but I have relatives that teach. I'm pretty sure one of them is using this statute in order to teach the Bible in his class. But it, uh, check it out. I won't read it for you. You all can bring it up in another tab. It is... It's, all, it's really short. It's like three, four sentences, four sections. Go ahead. It's really, really bad. Go ahead. Right, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Um, I, the audio quality is, is, is very, very bad. I'm going to remove you. Uh, I'm trying to bring in uh, one last caller. Oh, and you're the, um, what, what is your title now? Head of Atheist? Um, oh, uh, yeah, the Texas State Director of American Atheists. Yeah, I mean, this sort of legislation is obviously something that you're aware of. Yeah, but it, uh, I'm not the director of Kentucky. I don't think we have a director of Kentucky. I'll have to look into that. I would point out to. that Tennessee is a is a battleground state for evolutionary teaching. It's um, one where the NCSC has consistently had to go back. Uh, Kansas, Texas, and Tennessee and Louisiana have been the four biggest states for for legal battleground issues. Jim, are you with us? Well, it's nice to hear the television. In Five there. seconds, Jim. One, <laughs> two, three, four. Kick him. You're done, Jim. Kick him. I think he's dead, Jim. There we go. On that note, on that bombshell that Jim <laughs> cannot speak to us, uh, we'll bring the show to a close. Can I thank uh, Aronra and Concordance? Ah! Uh, <laughs> you knew I was going to get it in one last time. Uh, for being on the show, can I thank everyone that's come along and watched and uh, for the callers. Uh, and again, uh, a thank you to uh, Cream for doing the banner for us and to Tony for um, doing all the technical work in the background. We will back with you in two weeks. I have to say that um, getting uh, special guests on has not been a priority of mine uh, in the last few weeks because I've been concentrating such time as I have uh, for the MSF uh, charity event, which again, uh, let me remind you, takes place over the weekend of the 8th and 9th of September. Um, if, if you have anything that you would like to offer uh, for the eBay auction, the email address that you need to send uh, information to is actually above the chat. So on that note, final words, anyone? I just wanted to remind, uh, or or I'm get, in a month's time, I'm going to be at uh, Denver, Colorado for the Ascent of Atheism. I'm going to be on a panel with a couple of guys you may have heard of, Dilla Hunty and Seth Andrews of The Thinking Atheist. Well, that's interesting because, although I don't want to give too much away as to what will be taking place um, during the course of the charity event, uh, the last three hours, I think, uh, are... Seth Andrews of The Thinking Atheist, uh, Aaron Ra and James Randi, and finishing off with um, me, Aaron, and Matt Dillahunty. So there you go. Concordance. Nope, that's it. It's great to see everybody. Thank you. Are you going to be at any of these conventions, Concordance? I don't know. Uh, we'll see. We'll see. There's all this controversy <laughs> over uh, sexual harassment. I'm not sure I can contain myself. I'm <laughs> on that bombshell. <laughs>